Uh, okay, so now I'm actually going to work toward... Um, hold on. I had a sneeze there. Okay, I'm going to work toward actually... Not work toward, I'm actually going to add um, the Riemann rectangles here. So again, just the way I like to do things, I don't know if this is great man in practice, I don't really care. The way I like to do things, that's not true, I do kind of care. Um, the way I like to do things, like everything that I'm going to create, I kind of like to do like above, and then I like to add everything underneath it. So the next thing that I want to create are going to be Riemann rectangles. Uh, and if you if you noticed, uh, so I think, I, where did I see it? Uh, so, sorry, I thought I had this pulled up already. Uh, if you go to the axes documentation, uh, there is a um, thing, uh, sorry, not axes, uh, coordinate system. If you go to coordinate system, uh, there is a method for get Riemann rectangles. So where are they here? Get Riemann rectangles. And so I'm going to be using all of this stuff, and I'll come back to that. Okay, I want to do get Riemann rectangles. And what that's going to do is it's going to get the Riemann rectangles and it's going to return them. But what it returns is a V group. And rem remember, we've talked about V groups. V groups are just ways uh, to take a bunch of objects and put them into one thing. And then Manum handles that one thing. So like, for example, we can make a V group and put in the axes and the function here. Okay, so I'm going to call them rectangles. Uh, so the rectangles, sorry, let me get my notes pulled up over here. Uh, the rectangles uh, are going to be equal to the following. Okay, so we're going to do ax, that's the coordinate plane, uh, dot get Riemann, uh, and I can't remember, it's rectangles or rect rectangles. Rectangles. Okay, and it takes a few arguments, um, but you have to give it like I think one that's like the mandatory argument, you have to give it the function uh, that you want to do the Riemann rectangles for. So for us, it's going to be func. Okay, so I'm going to have that. Uh, and then I'm going to do self dot play create. Okay, and so I'm going to do this. I'm going to kind of build step by step until we get something, uh, until we get something more, um, you know, more sophisticated, I guess. So I'm going to run this. I actually think I might want to put numbers on the axes as well. I, I don't know yet. We'll see. Okay, so let's, there we go. Riemann rectangles uh, doing exactly what you think they should do. Uh, let's make a few observations. Uh, so one, it looks like it's using the left, uh, the left hand endpoints to make the rectangles. Uh, two, it's made a whole bunch of them. I don't know how many this is. Uh, but notice we didn't set how many that it was going to make. It made the amount that it wants to make. Okay. Uh, and then finally, notice we have this pretty cool color gradient where we start with blue over here and it converts to green over there. Okay. So I think maybe one of the first things that we might want to look at uh, is going to be, can we uh, set uh, the width of the rectangle or the number of the rectangles or something like that? Okay, so what we can do is we can set uh, dx. Let's say I'm going to set dx is equal to 0.1. So that means the width of, it, of each rectangle is going to be 0.1. So let's let's run this uh, and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like maybe it was 0.1 before. Um, okay, so maybe 0.1 is the default. So let's change it to 0.25 uh, and run it and see what we get. There we go, each one of these rectangles uh, has width 0.25. Um, okay, but let's say, um, you guys probably can think about this on your own. Uh, let's say we don't want uh, to, we don't want dx, we want, we want to fix the number of rectangles that there are. So let's say we want to fix like four rectangles. Uh, well, for that, remember dx is equal to the length of the interval divided by the number of rectangles that we want. So dx, remember, is equal to the length of the interval divided by the number of rectangles that we want. So now we can do x max minus x min. And remember, since we did that whole buffer thing, x min really is the left end of the graph, and x max really is the right end of the graph. And let's say we want there to be five rectangles. So now when you run this, there should be five rectangles.
Okay, good. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, and notice it's still using the left endpoints as well. Okay, well, what if we want to use uh, the right endpoints? Well, there's there's a parameter for that. It's input uh, sample type. Uh, so now we have left. Uh, and before, uh, sorry, we can do right. So let's try right. I think that's, yeah. Uh, so if you're going to try right, we're going to get the right hand endpoints. Okay, and so again, using right hand endpoints, and if we wanted center, uh, we could use center. Okay, so there we go. I meant to I pause the recording. I meant to pause the video here. Okay, uh, so that would be oh I haven't played it yet. So this is with the uh, this is with the center uh, uh, center endpoints or not center endpoints with the center sample point. So I'm going to put this back to point two five. I'm going to run it again. Oh, I wanted to put this back to left as well. Um, Okay, so so let's consider the case um, now where we want to do the area between two curves. Okay, so I'm going to add another func to this called a line. So line is going to be ax dot plot. Uh, so I want to know the area that is uh, between the between the curve that I just drew and the curve. Let's say y is equal to x. So the curve is going to be lambda x. Uh, it's just going to return x, and then we're going to go x min to x max. Okay, let's just graph this uh, to see if it's what I want. Uh, so draw border, then fill this. Uh, self dot play. Okay, so now I'm going to run this, um, and it should do everything that it's doing except after um, after it does that one curvy function, it should give us a line. So there we get the cool curve function and there we get the line. And so what I want to know uh, is I want to know maybe the area between these two uh, between these two functions here. I want to know the area between these two curves. Now they intersect because I've, I've sort of said this example of, I mean you could solve it analytically, but I know they intersect where x is equal uh, to roughly 2.605 or two, sorry, 2.065. So now what I want to do uh, for my rectangles here I'm going to set my range. So for the rectangles, I'm now going to set my range, uh, which is x range. x range is going to be equal to x min, because the left hand part is OK. Uh, and then again, it's going to be 2.065. How do I know it's 2.605? Well, you could just set these two things equal and solve, but I just did it in Desmos and solve. That's where they were. OK, so that's what we're doing. Uh, and now I want to have. Uh, functions like I want to have uh, rectangles go between these two not from the top to the bottom and so there is a uh, a parameter for that an optional parameter called bounded graph and I'm gonna say this is equal to line okay so now what should happen is I should get rectangles that have width of 0.25 going from here to here Okay, and there we go. These are these are the left-hand endpoint rectangles going from here to here. Uh, it looks a little strange, so let's do it at point one just to make sure we have something that will that will look like what we need it to look like. Okay, so it looks pretty good right there. Um, okay, the last thing that I want to talk about is color. So notice. The color is kind of automatically defaulting to this blue to green thing. Uh, so here's one thing that we could do. I could just say make them all white. Uh, if I make them all white, I think this is the right thing to type. Okay, so all white rectangles would look like that. We could do all black. Uh, but let's say we want to have a gradient and we want them to go from white to black. 
Well, we can do something like this. And when we do this, there's going to be a gradient that starts at white on the left and increases to black all the way over to the right. Uh, what's happening here? So this is not playing for some reason. Okay, let me try this again. There we go. Okay, so again, we have this gradient with this, this color gradient here. Okay, uh, and, and again, you can look around uh, on Desmos to see to see more or less, um, you know, to, to, to see more, I don't know why I said less, to see more about all of the different things that you can add here. Okay, now I want you to, to think of what might be a following uh, interesting demonstration to have where you, you know, show the Riemann rectangles where there's just maybe two rectangles and then three rectangles and then four rectangles and so on and so forth. So it's kind of like similar to what we were doing with the secant line, uh, but with Riemann rectangles. And think about what you could do uh, to try to make an animation that does 